Hello, 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 and welcome back to Movies That Pop. I'm the Colonel. Let's see what popped up in theaters this week. Today we're looking at the return of Sylvester Stallone as Rocky Balboa in the first film that doesn't bear his name, Creed. This time around, the story centers on Adonis Creed, the illegitimate son of Rocky's first major opponent, best friend, and mentor, Apollo Creed. And put simply, this movie is an altogether singular film that triumphantly stands on its own. Adonis Creed, as played by Michael B. Jordan, is a fascinating character, and his narrative is compelling in an altogether different way than Rocky's. This isn't just an attempt to wring more money out of a beaten up old franchise, and it does not feel like a reboot intended to set up multiple sequels. No, Creed is a surprisingly effective, moving, and thrilling drama, which does what only the best sports movies do, it inspires. That's it for the capsule review. Let's get in depth. Now, I'm not gonna go too far in depth and end up reviewing the Rocky franchise overall, but suffice it to say, when we left off in 2009's Rocky Balboa, Rocky and his film franchise had been sent out to pasture with style. Because we just could not end with Rocky V. But that's all done now. What else of Rocky's story is left to cover? At his age, he literally can't lose anybody else. Everyone he loves has died. At, well, not everyone. You do find out in this film that Rocky's son, Robert, lives. He's just moved far away. And in one emotional scene, Rocky looks wistfully at a picture of him as played by Stallone's real life son, Sage, who tragically died in 2012. I guess having Rocky Jr. also be dead was simply too much to bear. But as for Rocky, for all intents and purposes, his story is over. We, the audience, know it, and he seems to know it too. Everything I got is moved on, and I'm here. But you know what? It's OK. Because I said to myself, if I break, if I'm hurt, whatever, I ain't going to fix it. Why bother? And I'm just some bum that's living in your crib, just, just nothing. You're a good kid and a good fighter. But you got your whole future ahead of you, mine? Back there, like all them guys on that wall, in the back, in the past. But he still has use and is put to great use as a supporting character in the story of Adonis Creed, a young man who has grown up with no father and lived a tough, violent, hard scrabble existence until Apollo Creed's widow, played by Felicia Rashad, adopted him and took him to live with her when he was a little boy. After that day, Creed has grown up shadow boxing with the ghost of his famous father, even literally during one scene where he stands in front of a projection TV showing one of the Balboa Creed fights. Now that kind of obvious symbolism could come off as corny in less capable hands, but Jordan and talented writer-director Ryan Coogler ground this story so much in reality that it works in powerful fashion. Creed tells the story of a man with every opportunity afforded him due to wealth and privilege, but with a massive chip on his shoulder. A man going after the thing that money, or his lineage, which he tries to unsuccessfully hide from the world, can't buy. When he states plainly, at long last, in one simple line of dialogue, what really drives him near the end of the film, it all becomes clear. And everything that comes after is cast in a new and kind of beautiful light. And Michael B. Jordan sells the whole character. He also sells, along with Tessa Thompson, a welcome and natural love story that does not feel obligatory or detract from the story in any way. This is a film more grounded in reality than at least the last four Rocky films that preceded it. It's got a tight, lean storytelling pace with no filler and populates its gritty world with instantly real characters. Nothing feels written, not even the par for the course inspirational speeches, which all just seem to tumble out of Rocky's mouth rather than tumbling off the laptop of some screenwriter. Some of the Rocky tropes are there, like the theme music, the man himself, and of course, more than your fill of training montages. I think I counted four or five. But some of the more fairy tale elements, like 
the fighters' names. I mean, look at the names of some of Rocky's opponents in the past. Clubber Lang, Tommy Gunn, Mason the Line, Dixon. Naming this film's opponent Pretty Ricky Conlon is a pretty good step forward for the series when it comes to realism. Also helping matters is the way the fights are shot. Now, look at this scene, which was clearly supposed to play like one long, unbroken take. Now, I'm not buying that it was shot in one long, unbroken take. I mean, I've seen Spectre. I'm sure there's some special effects wizardry at play here, but the overall effect of the swooping camera has a visceral impact. During the film's final fight sequence, I literally felt a physical reaction to the drama and emotion. You're prepared for Rocky movies to make you root for the main character, but not since the first and maybe the second Rocky film have we felt this invested in the outcome. Not winning or losing the fight, but what the fight will do for Creed's mind, for his heart. You will love Adonis Creed. You'll love his relationship with Rocky Balboa. Creed is an extra large bag of popcorn. This is one of the year's biggest surprises. I don't know what I expected this movie to be, a sequel, reboot, rebranding, but what it is, is, and excuse me for this, I apologize in advance, Creed is a knockout. I hate myself. That does it for Movies That Pop. As always, you can follow me, the Colonel, on Twitter, at Movies That Pop. And you can subscribe to this channel by clicking the icon at the bottom of the screen. I'll be back soon with more new reviews, and in the meantime, thanks for watching. I'm the Colonel, and let's get ready to rumble!